Yeah, but I don't know. Like ever since I've been doing these lives, when, when people say shit I love or I get excited, I'm like ah. <laughs> yeah, but I think Eric and Jeff, like I, you know, I, I'm I'm amazed like at what you guys are doing, and, and I, I'm not amazed in the, in the spirit spirit of journalism or I mean, although you guys are great, you ask great questions, um, you're thoughtful, you have great comedic timing, um, and but but I think it's dope because of the journey. You know, people get so lost in the sauce and, and look at the immediate because they, they're just seeing you in abundance, right? You mentioned earlier, you actually have records that yeah. you've done. You've yeah. sold out, you know what I'm saying, a back-to-back yeah, show. Yeah, Highland like, you know what I'm saying, to Bonnaroo, London, yeah. All, talk your shit. No. Stunt on these I, motherfuckers. Um, but yeah, you know who we I think it's you. We look up to we look up to, to two chains, right? We respect the hell out of two chains. This is somebody who, if you think about like someone who made it late, quote unquote, late in rapper life, two chains was Titty Boy. Two chains was on that Chappelle's show episode in the back of that ludicrous, you know, performance. He was just like he wasn't even like I twenty. He was like the guy behind the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he like. Yeah, right. he has so many chances. Of Yo, you said I twenty. You went Yo, back. Shout out to I twenty. Wait, Stevie J knows who we are. Shout out to Stevie J. Um, yo, but like, but two chains. <laughs> he kept at it. He, you know, he doubled down. He he flooded the streets of Atlanta. He put out dope work, and legends recognized it. If fans did not, right? And so when he comes out and sparks that bidding war, and Def Jam steps up, and they're like, Yo. We're gonna pay you so much money to be you. That's that's like the blueprint for us. We're here doing the work. It may not matter that like you know what a lot of your audience may not know who we are right now. There's a lot of people who Jeff and I talk about this on the regular. Like there's a lot of people who who just don't know who we are. We've been around for 13 years. You know it's okay that people are finding us every day. People well, are like because our our stuff lasts. Right? Yeah, it's everlasting. It's quality stuff. It's consistent. Well, guess. Um, yep. One yeah. of these days, it's going to come around, and we're going to get like that big, big bump. You know, like we're not afraid of. Yeah. We're not, but listen, we're not but listen, of, it's, um, it's, of, it's of of failure, and we're not afraid of like adapting. It's always going to be our voice. We're always going to be true to who we are and what this is. And you know what? We're going to keep plugging forward. Yeah. Well, let me let me just give you some. Virtual high fives. This has been 20 years for me. So it's a continuum. It never stops. The goal is to just continue to give your offering. You know, the, the respectable thing about it is, too, that you won't lose your voice in the process. A lot of times people get opportunity, but that opportunity puts them in a place of having to do what the master says. And if you're not working for yourself, know that you are working for somebody else. So I applaud you doing it out your apartment and staying sucker free. The key is to stay sucker free. But I want to go somewhere really quick. I read an article in Vice, which you motherfuckers are genius for because you got to write your own article. Yeah. I don't know if that's white privilege or you're just that, that talented. Sure. <laughs> but what I but what I do want to what I want to applaud you on is the fact that you got to write your story about yourself, which made no room for flaw or error. You got to tell people exactly what you wanted them, but it taught me. I mean, obviously, they had your Breakfast Club interview involved in that. They had a video you had for one of your songs. Yeah. Um, but I really understood. I wanna, obviously, listening to the podcast, listening to the podcast, so forth and so on. And, uh, but yeah, so like, what is, what is that like being able to write about yourself in fuck? Well, I, I need to So, Kenny, you want to know something interesting? So, 307 episodes, having everybody come through our apartment, Cardi B to Uzi to Case Lay to... Mega Stallion. Yeah, you know, you know, we did that, the, the Rockefeller event, we did Semtex, we did all these different people, right? Um, 307 episodes, and everyone's like, oh my God, you guys are like amazing interviewers, and the secret is... We're great listeners. We're really good listeners. And what we do is the person who's sitting in between us at that table is telling their own story. We're just there as like hype men. Yeah. We're it's sort of like point guards. We like point them in the right direction. Yeah, we put them in the in the best position to score. So when you're on the podcast, Kenny, you're gonna tell your story. So really, we're not like, you know, oh, 
you know, I was doing this like crazy research and I found this like little bit about you. Tell us more about that. Yeah. It's actually you're offering up to us and we're just like, that's dope you grew up that way. Like, tell us more. Yeah. So like we've had people who've done alleged crimes and we don't like, you know, push them on them to be like, you know, we're not we're not knocking anybody out, we're not like challenging anybody. So it's like like we hate and you know, there's famous interviewers out there who just want the headline shit. They want their individuals sitting between them to get in trouble. They most want them of them. Them. Yo, and we don't yeah, we don't care about that. That's not what we do. Yo, the amount of people who have said shit that like could have been headliney, but that's not our thing. Like, I'm gonna be honest, we sat down with Drake's dad. But we didn't interview him as Drake's dad. We interviewed him as Dennis Graham because Dennis Graham has a story. Dennis Graham is from Memphis, Tennessee. Dennis Graham was there when Dr. Martin Luther King yeah. got assassinated. Well, that's a perspective we haven't heard before. But, of course, De- in- Dennis interview- Graham has a mustache. <laughs> he has a must. He also has a mustache that has its own story. It, oh, yeah. it absolutely By does. the way, I was Dennis Graham for Halloween, <laughs> and I fucking killed it. Like... Jeff got the mustache. Jeff had the fedora. Yeah, I did like it was. I did two looks. I did a, a dressed up Dennis Graham. I did a, a, a tracksuit Dennis Graham with like the the, the, the hard Yeah, and yeah, you know, we pulled up and up and down, and people thought that Dennis Graham was hopping out of that car. <laughs> but all that to say is that we could go for headlines. We just do not like. The guest right. is the one who is 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 telling their story, and what we want to do is shine the best light on them. So when it comes to that vice piece, this is the truth too. They couldn't find a writer for us, so we were like, "Well, we know our story pretty well. Let's represent for ourselves and put it out there." And I think in that vice article, we talked about our dad passing away, the effect that that had on us. We talked about the work that we put in on an, on an independent basis. We talked about what like putting out that album meant to us, and like and how how we would move forward and, yeah. and that stuff is all valuable because it is a perspective that no one else is going to necessarily get from us i said i'm so appreciative to you right now because like we don't get interviewed a lot like people find us interesting people find us fascinating from afar but to sit down sit down with somebody who is as you know engaged engaged yeah, i think they, like we I, I don't know why it is but like we don't get taken seriously by like the industry like the industry all want to use our platform, but they don't want us to be on their platforms. Right. I get it. Well, you know, let me tell you a little something about that. Part of it is fear, right? Because as funny as you are, because you're hip-hop sketch comedy guys, right? Yes. As funny as, funny as you are, you're at, as equal intelligent. I mean, and that's the proof in your interviewing. I mean, you were just talking to the girl from my hometown. What was her name? Um, the rapper? I'm, these, I'm from D.C. What's her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, yes. We, um... Oh, Rico Nasty. she was on the same... Huh? Rico Nasty. Rico Nasty. Rico Nasty. And, you know, she's going on and on and on. And, like, true, a true testament to a journalist is being able to, like you said, listen, but then also be prepared when they get a breath in so you can... And I just, <laughs> I mean, I listened to, obviously, you know, when, it was perfect when you... You know, when you spoke to Issa Rae, like the conversation was like you, and I don't know even how much you know her, but good journalists make it seem like you're actually in a relationship with the person. I, you know, yeah, yeah. But, I, but I recognize that in my, in my guy that works for, works with me as a producer on my show, he was like, yo, you got to talk to Eric and Jeff. Like I'm telling you, like their podcast is then the third. And I was familiar, but after he told me some weeks ago, I really dove in. So, but no, you guys yeah, are dope. Yeah, and I, and I actually, yeah. I hit you back and told you you're necessary. I don't say that to many people. No, man, and, uh, you know... And thank you, by the thank way. Thank you. Yeah. Like, like, you know, we try to tell people, especially during quarantine radio... Um, well, actually, no, I'll say this. For the entirety of A Waste Time, it's the real. We want people to, to know that they're appreciated, know that they're valuable, and know that their work means something, you know? And I think, especially when the, when the pandemic happened and we started quarantine radio, we were like, yo, like... We want to let them know that we love them. We want to know that, like, their existence matters. Like, I don't know if they're doing that where you are right now, but it's 7 o'clock every night in New York. In New York, people open up the windows and they bang pots yeah. and cans. And they applaud yep. for, the, for the... I think it's 8 o'clock here in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. But also, I think there's a little bit of people want to be heard. People want to know that, like, yo, 
I'm still alive. I'm still somebody. Like, listen to me. Like, hear me, right? Yeah, like, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a passage of time thing, you know, where it's just like you look forward to this thing because it's another day, you know, that you mark on the wall. So when we talk to those people, those 150 guests over 50 episodes, it's not just a number to us. Like, this is somebody who's a human. We can make that connection, hear how they're doing, and, like, let them know, yo, you matter. And so, like, for you, for you, Kenny Burns, to hit us up in the first place and then to tell us that we're necessary, that's that's love. So we appreciate you for that. Thank you. Yeah. But, but there's not a – and you deserve it. You're fucking right. But I think, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, culture more than ever needs people who can frame it properly. You know, and I think a lot of times, you know, the miseducation – of what somebody wants to do or thinks they want to do is the problem because you're not really connecting anyone with anyone in your, uh, in your you, anyone can do an interview, but if you're not in the interview and you don't know something about the person, something genuine or how to get an emotion out of someone, it's a pointless conversation. If you're just talking loud over somebody or this, that, the third, cause you know, somebody in common, that's not an interview. An interview is meant to be felt. It is meant for someone to walk away from said conversation and be like, you know what? I'm changing my whole shit. I'm inspired. <laughs> that, that motherfucker said, J yeah. Eric is funny as shit. Yo, Jeff came in and said he was fucking Dennis, and I'm, I'm going <laughs> to fucking, for, you know, Graham for Halloween. I'm not serious about that. But but my point is, you guys have a certain delivery. And speaking of delivery, I think, like, we're at a, um, a weird time in history, right? Uh, I'm in my 40s. Um, I've never experienced outward racism in my life. And there's a couple of reason, reasons why. Social media being the main one, because it's always existed. Social media just highlights everything. So yeah. the double down of it all is in effect. But, I, you know, I, I want to kind of talk about where we are in the political landscape, because I believe that there's only two options going into 2020. Um, 45 has to go. Um, yep. There have been, you know, there have been too many people that have uh, been in the sphere of um, confusion, right? And the confusion I mean is when, because I've had Angela Rye, yes, I had Amanda Seals, I've had Killer Mike, I've had Sean yep. King, I've had them all. And we've had great conversations. And they're right in all of their theories. But I feel with six months left to the election, um, we got to vote. Yeah. We gotta get Trump the fuck. There's no, there's no option in that. Like, there's a, so. How, how do you guys feel about what's going on in the political landscape? Not great. <laughs> I don't. I think that like. Hey, yo, Jeff, you're I fucking. Don't know, I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this afternoon or this morning. I forget when it was. It was today though, when Trump was tweeting about uh, Michigan and Nevada, and being like, "Yo." If you don't change, if, if you keep sending out ballots by mail, then I'm going to take away funding yep. for voting. And so it's like we're getting to a point now where no joke, if we're not going out there, and I, I really think people will stand in line, but I think that it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of like dedication, a lot of hard work, a lot of no joke, like joke, like layers of clothing and masks and the whole thing. And, and to really be out there and vote, or I, I, today, I swear to God, I was thinking about this. I was like, people really are going to have to take to the streets, and there might be riots, and there might be, like, physical battles, and there might be, like, a time to really take to action like we've never taken to action before, because, like, every single thing is taking away at the, the fabric of this thin democracy that we even have right now. And it's dangerous beyond comprehension because the guy yeah. who's sitting in the Oval Office doesn't care. Like he well, 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 well I, I want to say this, Eric. Eric, I want I want to jump in for two seconds, Eric. So I, I think you know you said a lot, and we're going to cover it because we have to we have to get to the point where people understand. You know, I, I mentioned I think yesterday he has some like two hundred judges, two Supreme Court judges. I mean, the way that they are peeling back things yeah. against black and brown people on another level. But to your point, he's if if you're call if you're telling states that 
you know, basically he, he was talking about the absentee ballots, you know, because people can basically mail their vote in instead of going to the polls. Or a lot of people are, I'm promoting it. I know a lot of other people are, but if, that's illegal, right? But he keeps doing illegal shit. And to your point of, and I want to just tackle this, you said it might go to the streets. I think that's what they want, E. e I think they yeah. really want to invoke martial law so they can run up wherever they want to run up in and do whatever they want to do, like some of them are already doing, but that's the scary piece. But I will say this. There's no more resilient race on the planet than the black and brown race. We have been tormented, tortured. We have been put in extreme conditions. We have been, you know, in a society which is America from the beginning with laws to oppress us and keep us in a certain place. But they don't want that smoke. They don't want that smoke. If they had to go to, like, bare arms and go gorilla fin for yourself, they don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that capital... I mean, here's the thing about the pandemic, that it sort of lays bare how made up all this shit is. Like, status is made up, money is made up. Like, the fact that they were able to just conjure up... Um, Shots to ludicrous. They were able to conjure up, um, <laughs> like, a trillion dollars just out of nowhere. And, it, you know, it... It's, it's all happenstance, right? Like, there's no reason why we were able to live our lives and the locks who grew up, you know, 10 minutes away were able to live their lives in a very different, less uh, resources, you know, that sort of way. So, I think I mean, now, too, by yeah. the way, now, given the pandemic, where it is, it's always been life and death for black and brown people, but now it is quite literally life and death with, you know, every passing day that, that you know, is, that we're going through, right? Why? Are Wait, hold on, around? Eric, Eric, hold on. You know what, it's like? It's life and death for our allies like you too. Because you want to know what? Racism will be trumped by classism in two minutes. It will be like the Hunger Games out this motherfucker. The people on the outside of the fucking dome, you know what I'm saying, will be fighting and fending for whatever, and the people on the inside have fucking the clearest water trees and fucking... Everything they want. I'm dead no, for sure. sure. But 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 I, I do think that it's it's in it's maddening and it's enraging that you know, out of the, the ninety plus thousand people who have died, it is such a disparity between um, black and brown people and white people. Everybody else. And I think that um, it's it, the, this isn't like it is criminal. And it is something where they they don't care. They, they don't care. They don't care. It, it, it doesn't even matter. Like this is before we hit the streets. This is like let them die off. This is this is like yeah. I mean, Yo, what is, I, wait, wait, hold on one second, Jeff. I, I think that you said die off. It just triggered something. When you think about the coronavirus, bro, and you think about what what we hear the Chinese do for population control, that is exact. I mean. A third of the deaths are in nursing homes. A third? That's, that means that's the older. Then the other people are the people that have, you know, respiratory issues. That, I mean, bro, and who has the most record of diabetes in the fuck? It's just, it's scary. It's almost like, would they really do that to us? Like, would they really, really do that to us? Yes. I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. No, I mean, like, I just think that capitalism only works as long as you have enough bodies to throw at the machine. And so once, like, listen, that, that was a bar. That was a Jeff, bar. you are fucking amazing. Jeff, what that are you that doing, was a bar. bro? That was a bar. But, like, say, it, say that one more time for the people in the back, Jeff. Capitalism only works as long as you have enough bodies to, to throw at the machine. And so, like, until, like, either enough people die off for, like, it's a get to the suburbs or you know regime must change Yo. so like that's sort of like where we are like it really took a pandemic to turn me into a full-on socialist like it's it's really crazy like as soon as this hit i was just like it's all made up like it's all bullshit you like, know the money that people are able to invent out of nowhere to pay for um like the bottom lines of like airlines and shit and like meanwhile like flint doesn't have water like you know basic needs are not and you can't water. pay reparations and you no, can't pay reparations. Oh, my God. It's all bullshit. People who are working essential jobs, 
Yeah, by can't way, make more than fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, by the way, for what? Every like hospital is getting their funding cut. Like it's all bullshit. It's but but bro, like th- this is my thing, Eric and Jeff. And if you're just tuning in, this is Eric and Jeff Rosenthal from It's the Real. I I am I am. It has to be another way. It, and 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 like you know, because Barack Obama, what he did for black people, he showed. Grace, his whole entire, his wife, his grace and how we were supposed to handle ourselves and just as humans, not even just black and brown, how people were supposed to be. But he didn't do a whole hell of a lot in in the scheme of things for poor people or, you know what I mean? Like he ran, those are politicians. So I I want people to understand about this, this voting uh, situation in 2020. Not only are, is it a federal thing, we have some state things with our senators and other in local level as well. This is so crucial because no one's ever going to get it 100% right. No one's going to ever do everything. I mean, look at the Democrats. The Democrats have to satisfy the gays, the blacks, the browns. The I mean, they have to satisfy so many people because the Republicans don't give a fuck. They don't yeah. care. Yeah. yeah, the Democrats... Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a big tent party, right? Like everyone's got to be underneath that tent and it's like everyone's got a lot of ideas and it's never going to be a hundred percent. Um, I think right now you got to look at it like this. Cause I know there's people out there who are like, I don't know about Joe Biden. Listen, here's how you got to vote. First of all, you got to vote. Number one, number two, it's your voting for Trump or you're voting against Trump. Well, I mean, which is like, I, there's so many reasons to vote for Biden, and I think that that's, like, what's sort of getting lost in all of this. Like, listen, he's not my perfect candidate, but that being said, the, the people that he's putting around him and the way that he's moving in all of this, like, post-pandemic, the way that they're rebranding all this shit, it's, like, it's sort of the candidate that you do want, right? You know, he is the guy who's going to push things to the left, and he is the guy who's going to put the Elizabeth Warren, the Stacey Abrams, like all these people. But he's also, he's also somebody who has, you know, when, when, when president Obama was like, we're going to fight cancer right now. I'm going to put Joe Biden in charge. So here's something that's, that's, that's humongous. And maybe you can't even wrap your head around. Let's give it to Joe Biden to control and figure out all the tiny chess moves that you got to make. Right. The ones that like people aren't even thinking of, Here's a big idea. Joe's going to handle it. Now is the time when there's a million big things that need to be handled because of all the things that were undone by this administration. We're going to keep losing if you if you only show up every four years. And that's and that's the thing that I'm on. I did not vote prior to. Obama winning the office. I was not concerned about local or state legislation, laws, nothing, right? And now more than ever, I have a, a son that's 19. He's He'll be voting for the first time. And it is my life's mission going forward to to use my platforms to help educate people. And the thing, the thing I meant by unify, unify is understanding that there is someone in office from local, federal, and state. I mean, there's all types of people in office that have to go. Let's identify and unify by pointing those people out, pointing, the, you know, because we, we read headlines, all of us. We read headlines. That's the thing that draws us in if we're going to read the article, policy, whatever. We need to identify those people, create a list. We need to share said list. We need to give it to other people to share lists. And we need to get busy because, see, what people don't understand is Trump, and the people like Trump are a dying breed. And I'm not saying that wishing death on him. He's 80 years old. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. This yeah. is not far off from being the truth. And with that, that mindset will die. All Absolutely. of their fears. Their- no, no, and I'm no. going to tell you, Jeff, I'm with you. Let me just tell you my point, Jeff. And I, 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 hold on, you get this. I love you, Jeff. But I'm just saying <laughs> that I'm saying a dying mentality because if 100 people left this earth and were the last with the racist mentality, and they left 200 kids. I guarantee you 100 of them are into the multiracial whatever. They're fucking black, brown, Asian, whatever. They're doing something where they're in the mix. 
The other ones, they're going to continue to die off. It's not, it's not sustainable if we change the power structure. See, the problem is that that money and control and that power puts people in a mindset that they are better than. That's where America will start getting back on the right track when that mentality is broken. But it's going to take some work, so we got to create. But I want to, but I want to get one more point in uh, yeah. because this point is going to take at least. 10 minutes because I know Jeff is going to come through with some point and (laughs) is going to wrap his brain around the whole spectrum. Um, America's going to hell in a handbasket currently. We we, we just basically identify why. Um, How important, yes, how important is it for white people that are not with the bullshit, with the racist shit, that aren't racist, how important is it for them, literally, to draw the line in the sand against white people that are. Oh, I mean, but but you know the answer to that, like. And, and no, that I don't. Is... That's I don't. I don't know your answer, and I can't speak for all white people. I believe that's in people. True. I believe in people, but I know I have friends that prior to the pan, um, Trump in office, we had a whole other relationship. Since yeah. Trump's been oh, in yeah. office, it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think. I mean. I think to put it plainly, like it's it's super important for white people to draw the line. You know, I think that it's it's important for white people, like, even as basic as hey, don't say the n word. You know, what I mean, like it's very like, you know, I think that white people need to step up, and you know, when when brown people are getting locked in cages at the border, when um, when uh, black people are getting killed by police. White people need to step up every time because uh, black and brown people do not have the voice that white people as a collective do. And furthermore, the power, it, the power, the power, the voice, any of it. Everybody now with social media and there's so many negatives that come with social media, but this is a positive. There is a chance for people to have a voice and to use their voice in a positive fashion. Right. We do not have the biggest platform, but with what we do with our audience we do speak to these issues, and we try to use our voices for good in this world. There are so many people who have Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts, and like, but it's more than putting up a tribute to somebody. It is actually going out there and doing the work, right? So it is marches. It and that's is the problem, values. Jeff. I mean, uh, the problem, Eric, is that Eric is that it's not enough to say, oh, my God, post a video, that's so fucked up. Like, it's, yeah. it's yeah. time, you know, to go and make videos and to show up and make, you know, because, you know, my thing is this. I, we, we have black leaders, in my opinion, that are billionaires, right? But they don't really play in the sandbox with us. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. they're there and they make occasional, but they're not really, you know, if I had $4 billion, Eric and Jeff, you know, two billion would go to, you know, basically flip, fix up every historically black college, you know what I'm saying, in the country because these could essentially be state colleges and get federal funding, honestly. But if I if I had the money, if I had the money, I would go into inner cities and beautify it because because people come out their doors and they see nice shit, they're gonna want nice shit. They're gonna want yeah. to take care of and so I just feel like, you know, you know, White and black people, we have to stop, like, you know, doing these fucking GoFundMe. I mean, it's, you got to do GoFundMe. People need money. I'm not saying don't do GoFundMe. Right, 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 right. It's like doing what everybody's doing and, and, and really go use your relationships. You know, Jamie Foxx, after I did my Sean King interview, he called yeah. me, asked me, was I running for some type of office that he wants to back me? And then he said, I will call whoever, whatever you. And my thing is like, shit. I'm four weeks into being woke as far as politics is concerned. Like, and then, you know, the, the rest is, yeah. will be history for here's, sure. But here's yeah, why I so. think that matters. Here's why I think that matters, Kenny. I'm sorry to cut you off, but, but no, I love it. But for, for this generation now, I think you, you were like, yo, the younger kids give me, give me hope that like, you know, if the older folks are going to die out and that old way of thinking is going to leave us, maybe the kids and Jeff's like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Here's where we can make sure that that happens. If you think back to um, 20, uh, 2008, when Obama was running, 
and pop culture got behind him because they believed in the message, they believed in the hope, they believed in that future, and, th- and things naturally happened. Will I Am was just, you know, turning that, that, that speech into a song, right? People, like, uh, Shepard Ferry was creating that out of, like, he felt it. I think yep. now, if young kids, if, and you see this from the NBA, right? Steve Kerr speaks out when he when he sees gun violence or when he sees kids locked up or Trump's doing something crazy. LeBron, Carmelo, Dwayne Wade, all of these guys speak up. They understand. And people before them didn't. Shout out to Michael Jordan and the documentary and his whole career and everything. You, As they spoke about, he wasn't Republicans by shoes, right? He wasn't all the way out there. Now people who are in pop culture, the Travis Scotts, the, the, look at Cardi. She speaks out like, you know, all kids of a certain age can say something and convince other kids who don't know people like uh, what I really believe in what Cardi B is saying because she sounds smarter than my mom and dad do. I think that's a place now where pop culture athletes, um, in young intellectuals, like people with a voice can actually make change happen. That's yes. what I think. Yeah, I, you know. Pop culture didn't win in 2016. You know, Katy Perry and um, everybody who Karen Civil got to hang out with. Then let's not leave it up to Katy Perry anymore. No, I agree. But I'm just saying that, like, you you can't leave it up to pop culture. Like, kids need to vote. And, yes, like, the stickers at the at the voting booth have a certain of making voting, voting viral or cool or whatever. But, like, kids just need to show up. And I don't know, you know exactly how to how to do that other than to show them first the time voters what's happening at that first time voters that's the way you know yeah. there's a whole new crop of voters that will be coming you have to broaden uh, the tent yeah broaden the tent and jeff you've been giving some profound one-liners but i'm gonna give this last one to eric because <laughs> he's right we have to this is this might be the important piece in ending this portion of the conversation we can't depend on our superheroes anymore because our super and eric is that uh, six times out of ten gender based or selfish in their offering and then you don't know really how much you know they're going to really work we know we're going to work because we got to go out here every day and figure out how x y and z is getting paid how we're going to you know saying grow our brands and what money we have to spend to do this so you know, I, I want to depend on us, and I'm working on something now, and I'll bring it to you guys when I'm finished, to really focus on first-time voters. And I think even first-time awesome. voters could be dope for parents and cousins and aunties and friends because if they see them doing it, then they can be inspired. But I want to tell you guys this, and on the Kenny Burns show, I like to give people their flowers because I think you guys have a unique offering. Not only, you know, and I uh, trust me, when I announced that y'all were coming, you know, I want to say this right now. There are as many black culture vultures as there are white. And Eric and Jeff Rosenthal are not culture vultures. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you guys are historians. You know what the fuck you're passionate about. And I want to give you that credit because at the end of the day, I think a lot of shit gets confused. Hip-hop is not one genre's music. It is the world's music. And we have to think like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said earlier, Grandmaster Flash and them came up with some shit and they doing their thing and Sugar Hill and all that. Then Jay-Z and fucking Puff and them took it to another stratosphere and made it 360. And now this next generation to take it to where it's the number one commerce in the world over Apple has to be a unified thing. So I, I stand with you, brothers, man. I wish you the Thank best. You. Thank you sincerely, Kenny. Yeah, and I, and I can't wait to come on this to real. I'm going to talk my let's shit. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Listen... Kenny, uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate your platform. Um, please let us know what, you're gonna, what you want to do about young voters. We're with it. We're here for you. And uh, anything you need from us, we got you. Okay, brothers, keep going. I'm here if you need me. Thank you sincerely. Take All care. right, love, please. Yeah, make sure you follow those guys, man. They have a great uh, comedic offering um, with a lot of the things they do in their interviews, content they make. And just, you know, some cool brothers. I can't wait to actually meet them in person. Um, I'm a fan. So please follow them and uh, pay attention to what's going on in the community, man. Like, we have a lot of dope people doing a lot of dope shit. And y'all are dope. And tomorrow, Will Packer, my brother, we'll talk about some movies and some things. And, yeah, the dream is real. Keep going, y'all. I'll see you soon. Peace.